Father Stephen is the founder and pastor of St. Anne's Orthodox Church in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and writes the very popular blog, Glory to God for All Things. Father Stephen also wrote the book, Everywhere Present, Christianity in a One-Story Universe. So without further ado, I hope you'll enjoy this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. is probably around 2006. A very, very close friend of mine, Father Al Kimmel, who at the time uh, was an Episcopal priest, and we went back a long way in terms of our relationship, uh, was himself uh, sort of wrestling through uh, his faith. He was an Anglican, but who was looking both at Roman Catholicism uh, and at Orthodoxy, uh, although I'd have to say that at that time his his, uh, own background uh, probably made him uh, more uh, familiar with and uh, uh, fluent in uh, Roman Catholicism. So he contacted me and asked me uh, would I be willing to sort of write a guest spot on his blog, which was called Pontifications, and uh, would I be willing to guest spot as an Orthodox writer. And so occasionally I would post something. And after a number of months, uh, uh, Father Al came down, we had breakfast together one morning, and he said, you know, you really should consider uh, starting a blog of your own. I said, well, why? And he said, well, he said, you have a following. You don't know it. He said, but every time you post something, I get a particular blip in readership. He said, I think you should do this. And he sort of told me the how-tos of to, to set one up. And so in 2007, uh, I set up uh, the blog Glory to God for All Things, uh, which is on uh, WordPress, and uh, began writing uh, simple articles, much like I had uh, for Father Al on pontifications. And through his generosity and several others who knew me on, on, uh, from my previous writing, um, they helped sort of uh, give a little push that helped create my original audience of a few hundred people. And uh, I, you know, what, I did several things that I had learned to do and I'd recommend to anybody who is blogging. One, uh, I learned only to write about what I knew. Uh, there's plenty of sites at that time, uh, more then than now, uh, that are sites of argument, uh, sites with, uh, that want to go over uh, theological matters and are glad to enter into debates uh, or internal squabbles of the orthodox old calendar versus new calendar, things like that, and all kinds of things. So, and, and for the convert who starts looking and trying to find things, well, the Internet is an absolute treasure trove of information about orthodoxy, a lot of which is positively harmful. You know, and being a priest, it was almost like the last thing I would tell someone was to go look at anything on the Internet. I spent as much time trying to clear up confusion in people from what they read. And so I tried to give people accurate information and wrote uh, only what I knew and what was solid and actually made some rules uh, for uh, my site, which included no arguing. You argue, I don't, uh, you can get deleted because I don't need it. You have to be kind to everybody. And I'm afraid sometimes I probably break my own rule and I'm a little less than kind or I speak too harshly or or whatever. I'm not perfect. But um, the site grew. uh, And what I was doing was, well, I would say too as a priest, I think one of the things that was very important was that fairly early on uh, I got the blessing of my bishop. And I only write with the blessing of my bishop, who today is, is my metropolitan, my current bishop is Metropolitan Jonah. And uh, interestingly, uh, my site is referenced on our Dossison website, which is sort of, it's not exactly like an imprimatur for anything I say, uh, but at least it's saying, I, I'm doing this with permission. I have a blessing uh, to do this. And so um, the, the church just doesn't need another priest expressing his opinion. I don't need, the church doesn't need me just expressing my opinion. My opinion is useless in many ways, and most often when I get into that. So I have to stay with what I know as a priest and to try to be faithful with that and to share uh, things that are faithful, whether it's observations on culture, observations on the faith, on scripture, on other things. Uh, To me, the benefit is that um, 
It has been a safe place for people to ask questions, a safe place for people uh, to, um, you know, to explore. I occasionally get brave and write articles on atheism because I would like to talk to them. And I'll get some interesting conversations from atheists. And it being the internet, you get them from all over the world. And uh, I've learned a lot that I didn't know, so that's a benefit, especially about uh, some younger parts of the culture. Uh, young atheists are not the same thing as, as 50 some odd year old atheists like who, you know, my, my contemporaries. Young people are not the same as they were in the 60s. Um, the other side of it is, is we've had, I've had uh, notes and letters and things from hundreds of people who have uh, found uh, that writing to be of use to them uh, in their journey to orthodoxy. In some cases, it was a deciding factor. In some cases, it was just one of many things that helped. And of course, you can't join the internet. You have to join a church. And so it's been of use, and I'm probably more grateful than anything from kind notes I've had from other priests who said, we appreciate what you do. It's helpful. Um, and um, it's almost every time I see my metropolitan, I say to him, uh, do I continue to have your blessing? If you ask me to, I'll stop tomorrow. Well, I think if individuals are, are interested in uh, blogging, the first thing they need to do is ask themselves why. If uh, it's being driven by ego, uh, that you, you know, I think there's a, a thing that we all have, uh, particularly in our culture, uh, I need my opinions out there. Well, you, the world doesn't need your opinions out there. The world certainly doesn't need my opinions out there. Uh, they're, frankly, my opinions are pretty useless. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's uh, to, to do argument, uh, the faith doesn't need anybody else to argue. Um, you know, if on the other hand you want to write and you say you're enth uh, an enthusiastic convert and you feel a need to share your enthusiasm, well, share your enthusiasm, um, but don't suddenly try to be what you're not. You know, uh, if you're not a priest, don't try to answer questions that a priest should answer. Um, you know, I had one guy send me things who wanted to criticize the length of my beard and was quoting canons. I don't even think he was orthodox. And I remember asking him, who told you you could read the canons? You know, who put him in charge of canons, much less the length of my beard? I have a blessing from my bishop. You know, he saw a picture of me standing with the patriarch of Jerusalem, who has a very fine beard, I might add. You know, and mine was short, but you know, the patriarch didn't look at me and say, Father Stephen, where's your beard? I mean, that's silliness. And it, it leads people astray about the nature of orthodoxy. And if you think the or that orthodoxy is about the length of beards, I would almost ask you, please don't write on the internet. Um, you know, go talk to your spiritual father. Uh, this is, it, it, it harms things. Um, and uh, I generally, one of the rules I keep on my blog, I do not criticize priests. Uh, I don't tolerate criticism of priests on my blog. If the priest uh, needs to be criticized, uh, there's a way to do that. You call us bishop. And there is a hierarchical way of doing that. The internet is not a holy synod. And so I don't use it that way. I, I, I just, I don't go there. Uh, there have been controversies in the American church. I don't blog on the controversies. Um, that's not my job. I'm a parish priest and I have a blessing to write. And so, you know, there's always the question, if you want to take it up and begin writing, uh, one, write about what you know, write about what you like. If you don't write about what you like, you won't write well. And, you know, and you know, leave your ego out of it. But I would say especially, you know, if you're a layman or something, talk with your priest before you do it. Let him see what you do. You know, and don't be hurt if he says, this is useless. <laughs> uh, don't do this or wait a while before you do this. Um, you know, be accountable to someone. We're Orthodox, for heaven's sake. We live in a community, and that community has accountability. If you're a priest, talk with your bishop. Uh, if uh, you're a layman, talk with your priest uh, and get direction. Um, and, you know, and, and be faithful in those things. God will take care of it. Um, and, you know, if, if as much as possible, uh, try not to get too caught up in it and think that it's about you. As I say, I I've always say to my metropolitan, if you tell me to stop, I'll stop tomorrow. I'm enough of a human being that I'd probably grieve a little and I'd be a little bored because uh, I, I like to write. Um, 
but it never was about me. And if it is, uh, may my metropolitan tell me to stop for my salvation. Um, and I thank people anywhere uh, who are readers. I've enjoyed many, many across the world and uh, who've been very kind uh, and faithful to that. And uh, feel honored to be asked to talk about various things here uh, today and uh, pray God's blessing on uh, all who are watching this video and uh, may God save you from anything that I said that was wrong or silly. Glory to his name. Glory to God. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Stephen Freeman. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available, which happens every Friday. And if you would, please comment below to let me know what you thought of this video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.